Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. We're back on the road again, of course. And now we have a 9570 RT that's throwing emission faults. Thank you, EPA. So it's saying that the DPF and the SCR temperature is too high. Um, so I looked on JD Link on all the codes set in this machine. There was a whole bunch of them. So we're just gonna, you know, lay hands on her and see if we can heal the, basically. So let's get up in this tractor and see what kind of codes we got going on and kind of make a game plan. What is that noise? Oh, this thing's mad. Oh boy, look at all the active codes. Exhaust filter outlet temperature. Another temperature, filter system fault, exhaust filter, temperature extremely high. Well, this thing's cold and it hasn't even been running. Okay, now that we see what's going on here, get a game plan. Oh. And it's also only flashing three bars of def, and the customer said that the def tank is full. So we got that going on as well. You wanna hear the most annoying sound in the world? That. Oh, it's piercing my brain. All right, took the big black shield off the side here. Got the DPF DOC exposed. I cleared the codes out and then the only one that's coming back is a circuit fault for this temperature module, which goes in to these three probes right here. This is all one piece. And I did find where this thing was mounted up on the side here, this wire here was being pinched in between this module and the bracket. So I kind of slit the, the wires open and looked at them, but they look perfectly fine. So I don't think that was causing the issue with this. So we're gonna have to dig into a little, a little further here. Okay, well I got a new temperature module, plugged it in and the codes went away. And the def tank level went back to full. Well, come to find out, if, there's, if these codes will set, it will show three bars on the corner post display and flash. So, learned that today, the hard way. But anyway, got this plugged in, codes went to stored, they cleared, everybody's happy. So now we just gotta yank out these probes, install these three, put that cover back on. Okay, well, we're back at the shop because uh, once I ripped out that after treatment temperature module, I had a problem. Um, the probe that goes into the DPF outlet, um, it had gotten so hot that the tip melted and I couldn't get it out of the hole. Um, I kept trying to wiggle it and wiggle it and finally the tip of it just broke off in the hole. Perfect. So I had to extract the broken piece out of the hole and this is what I have now. So here's the probe, or what's left of it. So this tip was melted and swelled up to where I couldn't pull it out of the hole. And that's probably where the fault was. Electrical, the circuit fault was in, you know, in this probe being melted. So, I finally got the stop code to clear and I ran the tractor and at 1300 RPM, this thing is shaking like no other. 
seven between 1300 and 1700 rpm we just got a terrible vibration in the engine so i think we are over fueling the after treatment system and getting things way too hot so we didn't have any more time to waste so i went ahead and had the tractor hauled in and i hauled a, a 9530 to the customer so they could you know pull that 45 foot fuel cultivator just fine so they're able to keep running so we've got the tractor in the icu at the moment got her back in the shop so the next plan is we're going to pull the valve cover and i'm going to check for roller tip damage and then if we don't find anything there we're going to go into the fuel injectors on this thing so but i've got some other stuff going on this morning and this customer is able to keep running so um we're going to probably do something else and then come back to this later. All right, well, we'll we're down in Southern Illinois, kind of down by Farina. And uh, we got an 8400R that's dead in the field. And the farmer's wanting to work the ground, the tractor's in the field. So we're gonna see what we can do to get this thing pulled out of there. So stay tuned. All right, we got an 8400R here. And when I got in the tractor, the entire can bus was shut down nothing would come online the only thing that would come on was the hvac fan the radio and the armrest display would come up but it would only communicate you know with itself it, you couldn't communicate with any other controller on the tractor um, the engine would start and run for about 10 seconds and then die so i went to my service advisor connector right here and check my can voltages and i had like 0.7 volts like basically nothing so then i checked for a short to ground in the can bus and can high was definitely shorter to ground it was like seven ohms it's supposed to be you know greater than 1000 can low was 50 ohms something like that so they're both shorted to ground so then i have to try to figure out where it's shorted to ground so the next thing i did was i well i hooked up this lead to the the frame ground so i had a known good ground because everything back here is just filthy and i took the cab wall connector because your can goes through here so disconnecting this here is going to let me determine which direction is the short? Is it in the cab or is it outside of the cab? Well, I had the same resistance going to ground on the cab side of the connector and I had the correct, had like 48,000 ohms to ground on the chassis connector. So I knew the short was in the cab somewhere and I just needed to narrow it down. And so I just started unplugging stuff and watching, I left, so I'm into the can high, I'm checking resistance to ground and I got the battery switch off. So I'm just checking everywhere. And then I just happened to wiggle the armrest harness and I could get the reading to change. And I just happened to look behind the seat and these can wires were stuck, hooked into this little piece here. And they have rubbed through and was shorting out into the seat so as soon as i got that unpinched my my reading changed the resistance went way high so now we're just gonna cut out this bad put in a couple heat shrink butt splice connectors in there and retest and see what happens all right we got the can wires fixed leave them a little souvenir here i bet this thing fires right up and everything works perfect <laughs> Hey, we got a corner post now. Would you look at that? And this is a, a co-ops tractor and the farmer has been working the ground in this field and he wants to plant this field today, but this, this tractor is right in the way. So I was working as fast as I could to try to figure out this problem. So let's see if it goes into gear.
Yep. Well, at least this thing will move now. Let the display fire up. We'll get all the codes cleared out of it. All right, well, that tractor is good to go. Getting ready to go to the next thing. I'm not sure what's next yet, but uh, anytime you get in a tractor and you start it up and the engine might die, but you don't have no corner post display, maybe only the, uh, the armrest display comes on. Um, but if you go in and try to see what controllers are online, you've got no you know, controllers online at all. Um, you want to check your CAN bus voltages at the service advisor connector, you know, going from pin A, which is your ground, to pin C and D, and you can check your machine CAN, and you can check your, your implement CAN, but if you got real low voltage on your, your CAN wires, you know, you need to see if they're shorted to ground. So then you disconnect the battery, you know, if you've got a, a ground disconnect, disconnect your ground disconnect, and then you want to check and see if you're shorted to ground, you know, you should be greater than a thousand ohms. And then if you're not <clears throat> greater than a thousand ohms, like this one was like seven, you know, then the next step is to bring up the can circuit diagram. And then you're going to check and see, you know, is the short in the cab or is it outside of the cab? You know, that's going to narrow it down tremendously. So, you know, I took the, the interconnect off the back of the cab seeing which direction the short was it was inside of the cab so then you know that narrows it down quite a bit so you know going back in the cab uh i disconnected the the pdu didn't make no change you know and then i just happened to grab the armrest harness and i started wiggling on it and it was changing the reading on my meter so that's whenever i looked behind the seat and i found those can wires are being pinched in the seat and fix those wires and then everything came back up everything's online and now the tractor will run and we can get it out of this field out of the way so this uh, farmer can plant this field so uh today was a win got lucky sometimes you got a short to ground and the can wires you know it could have been under the cab on the chassis on the frame somewhere you know you just never know or you can you know pinch wires or mice get in there and chew something and you know wires are touching bare metal somewhere and short in the ground so you know we got lucky today but you know you got to just there's a process of finding you know where the short is you know on this one you know i didn't i had low voltage on the can so then i knew well it's probably shorted ground then i just immediately checked and yep shorted the ground so you just got to look at this circuit schematic and then try to figure out you know which direction and and where is it inside the cab outside of the cab you know and then you can just start going to different points on the harness and disconnecting it and figuring out which direction the short to ground is and then you can narrow it down from there so um a lot of people you know think modern mechanics are just parts replacers but you know we have to deal with a lot of electrical and CAN bus and controllers and you know you have to be able to have the technical knowledge and ability to diagnose this stuff and you know figure out where the problem is and what to do with it and sometimes yeah you just have to replace a part because you know like the other day I had a fuel dosing pump go bad well you can't just tear apart the, the pump and and fix it you know it's all electronic inside when it goes bad it goes bad you replace the part so uh, a lot of the times I get a comments on people thinking that you know modern technicians are just parts changers but you know we have to diagnose the problems and it takes a lot of skill and ability to be able to understand the theory of operation of all these electronics in this modern technology to be able to take that knowledge apply it to a schematic or a troubleshooting chart and being able to check and figure out where the problem is. So, you know, with all this modern technology, we gotta be really good with electrical. So, if you're wanting to be an ag tech, get really good with electrical. All right, we're at the next unit here. Only had to drive like an hour and a half to get here because I was way down south. But anyway, we got a 9560RT setting a code for the air throttle actuator position mismatch. So most likely we probably need an air throttle actuator, but sometimes it can be the wiring. So we're just gonna have to lay hands on her and uh, see if we can heal this beast. Here's the big unit right here. 
Okay, so I got my fancy little diagnostic test box and went through all the circuit checks. I checked the supply circuit and the signal circuit, and then we did a software check. All that is checking good, so that says to replace the air throttle actuator, which is right here. And there's, I don't know if you can see it. So there's a little electronic motor right there, and it's got a position sensor built into that motor. So the ECU knows what position the butterfly valve is in. So that air throttle actuator is used before and during a regeneration. So it closes that butterfly valve down to raise the exhaust gas temperatures before regeneration and then during the regeneration. So that's why we got to have that little unit there. And if that position sensor goes bad or maybe the motor's not actually actuating the butterfly valve um, then it's going to set a code for the position mismatch so um, i've got parts coming to me and we're going to go ahead and get this yanked off all right well, here's the air throttle actuator big big butterfly valve on this guy here's the you know the actuator itself here so we'll get that swapped out and bolt the back in and just had uh four bolts holding that in you loosen these two to kind of so you can get this up out of your way and then we'll put a new one in there and bolt it back together and we'll do a relearn calibration on the new one and uh everything should be happy by then all right well i got the air throttle actuator replaced and i got it recalibrated and everything's happy no more codes so he ought to be able to run the rest of the evening and and we'll move on to the next one, but it's going to have to be for tomorrow morning because uh, it's out of time, running a little late in the afternoon. So we'll see you on the next service call.